everyone welcome back to another episode of crypto catch up with me benny we're about to get into a new product here called hypernet now it's a global distributed computing platform like cloud computing but different so you're talking about the likes of Gollum, sonom i exec but these guys are saying they built it from the ground up and it's going to change the way parallel computing actually is performed so let's get into it Boom! Here we are. All right. Hypernet. So Hypernet is a protocol for high-performance computing across a distributed network of devices. Now, that's nothing new. But there's different ways to do parallel computing, and that's what we want to get into because that's what this project is all about. So let's take a look at the idea. So the idea behind this, well, it's a ground-up build. It's not supercomputing. It's not super distributed computing, but what is commonly referred to now as hypercomputing, hence hypernet. So what they're saying is that they're, they're not doing grid computing, which is in that logical segment, you know, big server farms are all working together in that, you know, sharing the CPU and RAM resources in the one logical area. But they're actually using some form of distributed computing, but also obviously picking up these devices that are sitting around the world that could be doing something that just simply aren't because now that we're in the the age of you know big data big data is absolutely useless unless you transform it unless you do something to it to actually add the value whether that be in real time which a lot of the time it's not because of the sheer computing power to run algorithms over it but that's where this whole premise is coming from so it's tackling that unused compute power for smart cities for new scientific research or even for data processing for you and i maybe that's video graphics creating movies a lot of that graphic intense you know resources that if i didn't have the computing power for at home and didn't want to spend that kind of money for one-off projects here and there i could use this network to be able to achieve that so it's really just connecting buyers and sellers in a marketplace it's providing a protocol for you know you and i to buy and sell and trade that particular resources or for me to have a project fulfilled by setting particular terms. Now, it's based on a buyer actually setting those terms, saying, well, I need this many CPU resources, I need this much RAM, so memory, I might need this much network bandwidth and this much storage capacity. Now, that then gets put out to the network, formed into some form of smart contract, uh, and then a seller can choose to pick that up um, and go, yeah, I'll sell you my space based on you know these terms and conditions. Now, there will be a protocol, like I said, with an API suite, so an application programming interface, which makes that you know interconnection between your computer, my computer, over a distributed network, and it's going to be using distributed average consensus. Now, distributed average consensus is actually quite a complex. Um, term it's something that if you look up on Google you're actually only going to find you know white papers written by universities but in effect it's a way to handle parallel computing um, in a particular way now you can read all about it they use it in wireless networks uh, and and effectively it's it's trying to improve those distributed networks and trying to utilize those resources in a um, you know, in a way that, that adds value effectively and, and allows those devices to talk to each other. So its token utility comes from four main functions they have, but really it enables them to vote, to upgrade the consensus or the, the protocols later on, uh, for job collateral, so you have to put something up to stop bad actors and the buying and selling, of course. Now, they're saying it's different from Gollum, which is GNT, uh, because that does more... Um, you know, very specific kind of rendering applications. Uh, it's different from iExec, but if I have a look at Sonom, I would probably say these two are in the same kind of marketplace, general purpose computing uh, and using that parallel computing power. How they achieve that is negligible if you are getting the job done at the end of the day from AI to machine learning. I don't think anyone can say theirs is better than another, but what these guys are saying is that they will be using process replication and check pointing so if a particular uh, seller is using their resources and they get to a certain point 
they checkpoint it there. So if something happens, they can go back and know that they've already done calculations up to that point. And process replication allows for if, you know, in these distributed networks, if something drops off and then jumps back on, you know, all the time, your network device or your Wi-Fi drops out, that you don't lose everything and that you can pick that back up as nodes or these, you know, I guess computing resources come back online. So that's a must in this circumstance to ensure that you get value for money really. So let's have a look at the tech quickly. Now on the left hand side there, you've got kind of three things. So the DAC computing API, so that's that distributed um, consensus. So it's gonna be built in a number of ways. So the team's looking and reaching out to other industry partners to say, hey, you know, what are strong languages to use for parallel computing, for, for large scale operations like this, C++, Python, uh, and they're gonna build out the libraries for that. So if you have a look over to the right here, this API library is gonna be doing a range of things. Effectively, you're looking at, um, you know, this consensus protocol that we talked about, uh, a P2P network, uh, so, you know, that, I guess, buying and selling or, or the interaction or the discovery of these nodes so you and I can be positioned together to trade across this distributed network. Then you've got this resource scheduler. Effectively, this is just you know, a smart contract creator. Uh, it's a, a, a broker as such. Um, they're gonna be building that with a, a nice functional GUI or a graphical user interface. So you and I can, you know, click, slide, pick how long, how much, etc. Or also with a command prompt. Because if you've used Sonom, it's actually, uh, I wouldn't say the user interface on their testnet at the moment is actually that good. Um, it's something that they desperately are gonna to need to improve on because if everyday consumers wanna use these products, they're not gonna be using command lines. Uh, they're gonna want some fancy, pretty uni user interface, sorry, that makes it easy for them. And that's what all of these blockchain technologies should be looking to do. I don't care that you're using a blockchain. I wanna make it a seamless user experience. So they've gotta get that right. It's using Bayesian modeling. Uh, so that learns from itself over time. Uh, so that's a Bayesian theorem there. Load balancing on the network is a must. Uh, if you don't load balance across, you know, these particular jobs and, and sharing the workload, uh, you're going to come to a grinding halt. Uh, so it uses asynchronous decentralized programming models. So asynchronous, if you're not into the technology sphere, synchronous, synchronous means effectively one task happens, not Another task can start until that other task finishes, uh, whereas asynchronous kind of allows multiple things to go on at one time. So if a CPU is doing one task, then you know a slice of the memory can be doing something else, hyper-threading, all that cool stuff. So it's dispersed, it's heterogeneous once again. It allows multiple programs or processes to be run at any one time, and it's dynamic. So like I said, if things drop out of the network, it can pick up Slack elsewhere and do all sorts of things. Uh, and it uses an MPI, so message passing interface. This is an industry standard uh, that was created by academia, universities all around the world. And effectively, it defines the syntax, it defines the semantics of how best to translate and you know, send data back and forth in parallel computing applications. So that's important. Other than that, there's nothing crazy about the technology. They do say it's a stand up or a ground up build. Now, what I've seen in the white paper actually refers to a bit of Ethereum there. So I'm actually concerned as to whether it is ground up um, or they're just using Ethereum in the meantime. A lot of people do that obviously just for the token while they're building it, but um, I'll probably got to check some questions around that. All right, let's have a look at the team and the tokens. So the team here, so Ivan is the main guy. Uh, he's from University of Auckland. I actually had a look up of him. He won a scholarship early on in his career uh, to, you know, $2,000 bursary award because he's obviously a highly mathematically minded guy. Um, a lot of these guys here from Ivan, Todd, Christopher, they're all from Stanford University or have spent some time there. Uh, so Ivan... Uh, it was an ex-PhD student from Stanford. I've written this down here because um, otherwise I've got to remember it all. Uh, he's worked with Plasma Rockets at Ad Astra, so that sounds pretty fancy. Um, overall, guys, these are actually very intelligent individuals, uh, much more than me in the mathematical sphere, that's for sure. Todd in the middle there. Uh, so Stanford Aeronautics. Um, 
works on neural networks and, and all that sort of stuff. Dan owns a solar company, uh, so has some form of technical or mechanical backgrounding there, once again. Um, and then Chris, down the bottom in the middle, has worked for NVIDIA, Facebook, and for Twitter. Now, the only concern I really have around the team, now there's more team members than this, is that they're all very mathematically minded. It's a bit of kind of AI, machine learning elements to it. But the actual development prowess, um, there's a big difference between university and real world application and building that out. And I don't see that in this team. Uh, so Chris has worked in that, but if you go through his LinkedIn, the um, the elements aren't articulated very clearly as to his development prowess. He has worked obviously in big names, but if that's in a tech support team or if that's in a call center or something, obviously it doesn't hold its value. Um, so if we go into the tokens, well, there's none just yet. Uh, this is still an early stage project, guys, so keep an eye out for that as to what it's going to mean. Is it going to be worth investing? Who knows? And let's jump back out and go to the overall what we think. So the team, like I've just said, I think, guys, the, the team has the actual, you know, the knowledge, the, the experience in those studied fields for parallel computing, distributed computing, etc. especially when they work for, you know, aeronautics and stuff like that. The math there is insane, exactly what this is going to need. Um, however, like I said, the development side of things, I'm not actually... Uh, sold on just yet, so we'll need to investigate a little bit further because this is going to take a hell of a piece of work to do. Uh, the utility, even though Sonom's out there, Gollum's out there, iExec's out there, and there's probably a bunch of others, uh, these kind of projects we need more of. So like I said earlier in the piece, it doesn't actually matter that this may, you know, cross boundaries with other projects is because this kind of thing we need out there for all the data that's being generated every day of the week so good on them i'll take that utility i think there is a use case the hype not any hype really as far as i'm concerned as of yet so is it going to give you bang for your buck probably not uh, at this point in time anyway. The novelty, once again, it's not very novel. Uh, there's plenty of projects out there. They're just saying that they're going to do it in a different way for general purpose computing rather than specific applications. So we'll wait to see. Well, is there an MVP? Is there any validity to what they've said so far? No. So there's no GitHub. There's no MVP out there available to test. Uh, same with Sonom. They've got the same kind of you know, test net available, but there's nothing really concrete showing that they've actually achieved this from mobile devices to, you know, layman's computers. So that is a big kind of catch for me is that if there's no hype and the MVP is still yet to come out, we need a lot more to ramp up before you actually see value in this project and the timelines. And if you have a look at the timelines, where we got here, we got the white paper here. Uh, so we're looking at August, start of August for the scheduler MVP. So that's just one portion of the three-part framework there. Uh, the API MVP, same time. Um, and the runtime, the actual big uh, execution side of things will actually be in December. Like I said, no tokenomics yet, guys. There's no information around that. And what I actually want to go back and say is just from the tech perspective, because I forgot about it, boom, boom, this um, hypernet executable environment, what it actually is, is like Docker and Kubernetes. Now, if you're not a tech guy, you're not going to know what that means. Effectively, when you have big server farms and stuff like that, you want to modularize or container and create an environment where you can run some arbitrary amount of code, but protect the underlying hardware, but it also allows you to share it around. And that's what that executable environment is going to allow this project to do. So one, you don't burn out the seller's hardware with crap code uh, that's infinite loops, it doesn't stop, etc. A lot of times in this case, it will stop because your gas or the, the token that you're paying in will run out. Um, but if they don't handle that sort of things, that's the execution environment that obviously, obviously will, will, I guess, handle some of that drama if it does occur. So if we jump over to the website, guys, hypernetwork.io, hypernet. They've changed their website just recently. Little video there. Come through, have a look at it, have a check out of the team. Like I said, there's a couple of other people in there. Um, that is about it. On Telegram, 
you're looking at, what do we got here? Uh, 1,400 members, I joined it a uh, low couple of hundred. So it's starting to get uh, a few people active, but like I said, no MVP, no real uh, information around tokenomics yet. So you will have to wait and see. All right, guys, that's the video. You enjoy the rest of your night, and thanks for watching.